and and I can't think of a specific Charleston corollary to this building, both in material shape and situation. So I'm not sure what a good kind of analog to that would be. Um, you know, it is a bit of a radius corner. So the geometry was looking to respond to both the shape of the building and the shape of the transom and just kind of tuck in there. Uh, we did, as I, I discussed with Preservation Society this morning, we did consider a more uh, structured kind of flat awning that fit above the door, but below the transom. Ultimately, it felt like it would be much more disruptive to the fabric of the building and would also <clears throat> prevent visibility of that transom as one was approaching the building. When you're standing three steps down looking up, this still offers a clear view of that glass. So we abandoned that option early on, but haven't really found a, a case study that's specifically particular to this. Any other board questions? All right, let's move on to public comment. We have April Wood. Uh, thank you. Um, April Wood, Historic Charleston Foundation. HCF has reviewed the request for approval for a metal framed canvas awning in the front entry of one Broad Street. This is an exceptional category one building in a highly visible location of the historic district. Ornate corner entries such as this are a rare treasure in Charleston and should be carefully protected. At one broad street, the corner entry is the primary focal point of the building. It has finely crafted details, included bow grain double doors, a prominent brownstone door surround, and a unique transom window. The installation of an awning in this location will obscure these character defining features. Additionally, there is no historic precedent for an awning at this corner. The Secretary of the Interior states the historic character of property shall be retained and preserved. The removal of historic materials or alteration of features and spaces that character, characterize a property shall be avoided. Although HCF is highly supportive of the adaptive reuse of this building, we do not believe that the pro proposed awning meets the Secretary of the Interior's standards. We appreciate the efforts for the reversibility of this awning, but we recommend denial of it this request. Thank you. And do we have anyone else? Any other public comment? Not to. We have Anna Catherine Carroll. Thank you, Kim. Anna Catherine Carroll with the Preservation Society of Charleston. The Preservation Society greatly appreciates the owner's stewardship of this building, in particular the recent exterior and interior restoration. And we're also appreciative of the architect taking the time to walk us through the nature of the request this morning. We are sympathetic to the desire to offer protection from the elements as well as opportunity to incorporate the name of the new business on the exterior in a sensitive way. That being said, we do echo Historic Charleston Foundation's comments in that we are concerned that the proposed awning would obscure important character defining details at this prominent corner entrance of the building. So we would ask for continued study of options with less visual impact on the unique transom window and door surround. Thank you. That's all we have. Thank you, Kim. Okay, let's move on to city staff comments and recommendations. Thank you. Installing an awning will detract from the detail and curved arch of the door surround and conceal the unique transom. The weight could be detrimental to the facade as well. We understand signage will be a challenge with so many character defining features that should remain un unobstructed. It's important to note that this building has never had very much signage. The iconic nature of the building situated on the corner is quite alluring in and of itself. A simple band of lettering in the freeze band above the door could be appropriate with minimal anchors. So the staff's recommending denial for the awning. Thank you. 
Thompson. Mr. Thompson, did you have anything you wanted to clarify or respond to based on um, staff and public comments? No, I do not. All right, we will now move into board discussion. All right, I'll start. Um, I mean, you know, conceptually, the proposal to me seems to make sense. And I'll be honest, I, I can absolutely see something like this happening in Paris. And I know you're going to put a French restaurant in here. So that's why that occurred to me. Um, but Paris has like a lot more buildings like this, and they just um, deal with them a little differently than we do. And that transom design is so lovely, and I think it would be kind of lost if it were covered by an awning. So I just, I'm wondering if, I mean, I know this architect is um, very talented, and I'm sure we can come up with some sort of solution that will work for everybody. And I don't know if the city would even be willing to entertain some sort of sign on a post on the sidewalk somehow, um, you know, to, because I recognize that restaurants do need some type of signage and I would hope that it would be tasteful and, and subtle and worthy of this uh, property. I should have asked this earlier, but, um, and, and this is maybe a comment for uh, Mr. Thompson, but the, the restaurant that was there, where was their signage? It was just- um, I'm not sure, to be honest. I don't know if there was any I'd never visited. Okay. I think they had something in the window, like inside in the window that was really hard to see. I'm not gonna lie. I, I don't think I ever saw it. I walked over there all the time, but I, I'm, I just wondered how they did it and if it, it would maybe give an example, but. I think when they sold pizza out of the basement, they had some sort of neon number they would put up and take back down from inside from below, or there was some kind of walk-up window, but I'm not sure about the, the dine-in portion of it. I don't recall what that signage was, if there was any. Yeah, I, I don't really think there was. I, I think there may have been writing on the window on the East Bay side. Um, but I, I, I think my, Glenn Gardner, sorry. Um, I think my comments are very similar to Julia's. Um, I feel like there is a solution here, but I don't think what we're looking at is the solution. I think the fabric as shown is too heavy and it obscures too much of the very interesting door. Um, I did a quick search, just sort of looking for images elsewhere, other cities across America and Europe of canopies over uh, curved or corner entries. And, and I, you know, they're, they're not everywhere. But I do think there are other solutions that could perhaps fit this building. I, I mean, having been there myself, I, I, I understand. I mean, it is a difficult entry. Um, you are fully exposed to the weather, buses, the cars, the traffic right there on the corner. You, you almost sort of need a staging place for, for patrons to arrive. Um, but I, I do think there can be a potential solution. I just I don't think the fabric awning um, is the right solution at the moment. And I, and I am certainly encouraged by the, by the project and the reuse. I, I think it would be a really great use of this building. Fillmore Wilson, I don't have anything to add really. I think uh, my fellow board members have uh, covered it uh, very well. And so um, I, I am in agreement uh, with my fellow board members and staff on this. Um, I do think there is, as Glenn said, and I think there is a, a solution to be found here, but I do not believe that this particular awning is it. All right, well then I'll go ahead and make a motion for um, following staff's recommendation for, for denial of this particular proposal. We have a motion on for denial. Do we have a second? And there will second. Thank you. Thank you. Now we'll put it to a vote. Glenn? Um, yay in favor. Julia? Yay in favor. 
Fillmore? Yea, in favor. The chair votes with the majority and the motion passes. Kim, if we go back to the agenda item number one, could you see if Mr. Morrison is, is available yet? He is. Okay. He has joined us. All right. To bring back in Bill. Okay. I'm in. I'll let you do that first before. I've completely lost audio. Okay. Hmm. Can you hear us, David? Now I can. I didn't hear anything once Fillmore started talking. When, did a vote happen? I won't ask you to repeat everything. It, it did. Um, the motion was for denial and the, the vote happened and the motion passed. Okay. Thanks for the consideration. Hmm. Do we have Bill back? You know, I'm not sure how to bring him back on. <laughs> Maybe Lawrence knows. Lawrence, do you know how to bring Bill back in? I can't find him. Um, I am sorry, I am arriving late and and I don't know the bill of whom you are speaking. Is it possible that um, that Bill hung up? Yeah, I'm gonna see if I can. Yeah. I don't. Call him. I don't see Bill on the list of panelists on on my uh, on my list. Well, that's what I was looking at too, and thought maybe he just. There's no way to let him back in because he's not here. I'm trying to text him. I was going to ask if someone could text or email him and have him jump back in. Is the item number one person there, the applicant? Uh, yes, cool. Kim said he was here. He's coming back. And uh, we're going to head back to number one. Is that right, Lindsay? Yeah. And we'll pick up with um, the applicant presentation since you already went through uh, the overview. Great. Bill jumps back in. Um, is that Mr. Morrison I see on the phone? Uh, you may hear me. I don't know if you see me or not. I just see a box, but you're correct. I do not see you. I apologize. I was there before, but um, my microphone was not turned on. I was actually on a different phone, but um, where yeah. do you like, where would you like me to start? Uh, just start with your presentation. You have 10 minutes. Uh, okay, I can't see anything, so I'm going to have to just, I've got it up on my screen, but um, page one is just the uh, title sheet. Uh, sheet two shows the um, site plan survey, showing the existing structure in gray. The two additions on the north side uh, crosshatched that are requesting to be removed. 
sheet three gives a uh, plan and elevations of the existing uh, additions that are requesting to be removed. And sheet four has photos of the existing structure with the additions requesting to be removed. And that's the end of my presentation. Okay, thank you, Mr. Morrison. Are there any questions from board members? All right, let's move on to public comment. See, we do not have any public comment for this application. All right. Let's move on to city staff recommendations. Thank you. While the addition to the north is historic, it's not a character defining feature of the building. The construction method employed is quite rudimentary, lacking craftsmanship, and devoid of any material that's of notable quality, character, or distinctiveness. Eliminating the northern additions would be a positive alteration and brings the building back to its original form. The existing siding trim and corners of the original form should continue along the north wall. So the staff's recommending final approval with final details to staff. Thank you. Thank you, Kim. Mr. Morrison, did you have any follow up or want to address any of the staff comments? Uh, no, ma'am. I would just prefer to meet with them to find out whether what further details they would like to re what further details they are requiring. Okay. Let's move on to board discussion. Um, I'm happy to see this happen. I think it, it feels like they're liberating that adorable little building. So I'm all for it. No more Wilson here. I am in uh, agreement with uh, staff and, and Julia. I think uh, removing that little addition will be uh, positive uh, for the structure. Will and Gardner, I agree 100%. I second Julia's comment that it, it does appear that they're freeing this little building after looking at it. I'll just make a motion for um, final approval with final review by staff. We have a motion on the floor for final approval with final details to staff. Do we have a second? Second. Glenn. Glenn, that's you. All right, we will put it to a vote. Bill? Yeah, in favor. Bill Moore? Yeah, in favor. Julia? Yeah, in favor. Glenn? Yeah, in favor. Chair votes with the majority and the motion passes unanimously. Moving on to agenda item 332 Society Street. Um, Chair, I will be recusing on this item, please. And if you lose us, just call back in. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, 32 Society Street is requesting final appro approval for the modification of a rear carriage house and rear portion of the piazza of the main house. The building is of category two in the Charlestown neighborhood. It was built in 1846 in the old and historic district. Here's an aerial just to give you a little bit of context. It's at the foot of Society um, in East Bay, open house in the um, north, north side of the street. Some existing site photos. Looking east and looking west on Society. And so this is the the biggest view you'll get down the driveway here. And if you zoom in a little bit, this is the carriage house. Here's the Sanborn maps from 1884, 1888 in the middle, 1902 on the right. And with that, I'll turn it over to the applicant. Christopher Liberatos.
You have the floor whenever you're ready. Mr. Liberatus, you are on mute. Sorry about that. Am I being heard? Now we can hear you. Okay. Um, good afternoon. My name is Christopher Liberatus. I'm an architect. I'm representing Paul and Paige Dicker, um, the owners of 32 Society Street. Um, would it be possible to see um, the third picture, please? That one. Thank you. Um, the owners wish to make a, a few minor alterations to this um, house, um, starting with the main house um, that uh, enclosed bay on the piazza on the first floor. You can see that it's enclosed with uh, sort of large plate glass windows. Um, the owners wish to open that bay back up um, and um, put back the missing column. Uh, and that column would be solid turned wood uh, made to match the existing columns. Um, and then on the second floor, directly above that, the owners wish to um, change those, that plate glass um, enclosure to traditional French door enclosure. Um, and that's the extent of the changes they wish to make to the main house. And then on the back house, um, you can see that there is a um, modern brick veneer um, garage extension. Um, and the owners wish to replace that with a new bay, uh, painted wood um, bay of um, French doors. And then um, picture four, please. Finally, uh, on the north elevation of that um, back house, you can see there is a, um, a, a horizontal window that's quite high. It's a transom height. Um, the owners wish to lower that sill um, and turn that window into uh, a normal size window. And um, that's it. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Mr. Liberatus. I think we have public comment. Mr. Liberados, do you want to go through your drawings at all? I believe you have some more time. Um, well, I feel like they're self-explanatory. Um, I'm happy to take any questions. Let's go to the, I think we have one public comment and then, um, I'll turn it to the board to ask any questions if there are any. You have April Wood. April Wood is our Charleston Foundation. HCF has restrictive covenants at 32 Society Street. We've carefully reviewed and approved the proposed alterations at the rear carriage house and the rear portion of the piazza. These two areas were insensitively modified in the mid 1900s, mid and late 1900s. Um, the proposed modifications do not impact any additional historic fabric and are a significant improvement to the prior work. We re respectfully recommend approval of this application. Thank you. Thank you. Let's move on to city staff comments and recommendations. Sure. The proposal is a sensitive and thoughtful proposal for increasing the space of the house, opening a portion of the piazza is an improvement as is replacing the last column on the second floor piazza. The staff's recommending final approval. Mr. Liberatus, did you have anything to add? Um, any response or clarification? Um, no, just like to thank the uh, Historic Charleston Foundation for their support. All right, let's open it up for board discussion and a vote.
who's going to kick us off? No more Wilson. Uh, I'll start pretty simply. I, it, it's, I agree with staff. It's uh, opening up the piazzas and improvement and clearly the addition on the back um, is more sensitive than what currently exists. So I am in full agreement with staff. Me too. Um, and yeah, I, I can just go ahead and make a motion for final approval. We have a motion on the floor for final approval. Do I have a second? Fillmore Wilson, I'll second. Thank you, Fillmore. Let's put it to a vote. Bill? Yay, in favor. Julia? Yay, in favor. Fillmore? Yay, in favor. Chair votes with the majority, and the motion passes unanimously. Agenda item number four has been withdrawn by the applicant, so we will move on to agenda item number five, 10 Ashley Avenue. Tim? Thank you. 10 Ashley Avenue is requesting conceptual approval for rear addition, including roof deck, rear stair, and gate relocation. The building isn't surveyed. It's in the Charlestown neighborhood and was built in 1936. It's in the old and historic district. It's an aerial for a little bit of context for you. It's between Trad and Broad on the east side of the street. Here's the house. And looking at it from the north and from the south. This is looking north up Ashley Avenue and down Ashley Avenue. And with that, I'll turn it over to the applicant. We have about 50 attendees. <laughs> so it's a little uh, slow going. Hello, <laughs> can everyone hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Fantastic. Thank you so much. Um, this is Nassim Kashmirian and Jillian Lagizman, and we're here to talk about 10 Ashley Avenue. Um, if you can go in the next slide. Um, so we have a couple of Sanborn maps that kind of illustrate that not much has changed since 1944 up until now. Um, and you can see in 1902, there wasn't anything um, there and in 1904, you, 1944, you see 10 Ashley Avenue, 1951, it kind of stays the same in 1955 as well. And then you can also see we have provided a historical plot. Um, if you go on the next page. Um, just some site photos of the rear, um, the front, the side and the rear. We aren't doing anything to the front. Um, we primarily want to focus on the back of the house and the driveway side. Um, and you can see there's already been a previous addition at the back of the house. If you can go to the next slide. So essentially we are um, expanding the back room, um, the back of the house, six foot uh, four inches and creating a sunroom addition with a storage room. Um, and in response to that, we are asking to move the existing um, side entry door and stair back and rotating at 180 degrees um, for ease of access. Uh, you can see in the next slide, the first floor plan, that uh, the owners currently directly enter into the dining. We are asking for access to enter in the back um, through the storage room and then entering into the kitchen. And the stairs will be um, widened by up to, four, will be widened four feet. Um, and if you go to the next slide, you can also see that uh, we are asking for a roof deck above the sunroom. Um, the original, the previous addition done by previous owners um, did have a small porch that is now the existing office. Um, we know this because there are existing doors that um, 
there are exterior doors that are used to enter into the office and there is a change in the um, floor, the floors and level. And so um, we're act actually asking to bring that uh, roof deck back essentially. And then in the next slide. Ms. Kishmarian, can I have a pause for just one moment? I, yeah. I apologize. We did not bring Lynn back into the meeting. I can pause. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm sorry to interrupt you in the middle of it. I, I know that you get on a train of thought, but the no, no, it's perfectly fine. Glenn, I apologize. We are um, halfway through the applicant's presentation on 10 Ashley Avenue um, before I realized that you were missing. <laughs> uh, Ms. Kishmirian, please continue. Okay, um, and if you can go to, we're obviously not doing anything to the existing roof. So um, in the next slide, you can see um, some elevations that kind of illustrate what we plan on doing. The front elevation will be left as is. Um, in the back, you can see that we are kind of keeping um, the materials as is. We want everything to match as existing. So that addition will be the same um, horizontal siding we are going to match the existing windows. The, um, the door that gives you access into the roof, out to the roof deck will be um, double sliding doors with a canopy that will match with the existing canopy on the driveway side. Um, and if you go into the next slide, um, you can also see that we are going to keep the side stairs as is, keeping it brick, um, Everything will match existing. The door will remain the existing door. The only change we are making to the stairs is widening it by four feet um, to allow ease of access. Um, right now, the owner does struggle kind of going up and down those stairs. They do have a little one. So kind of getting that stroller up and down has been a big um, issue for them. So just kind of widening that out will help for them. And then um, everything, as I said before, will match existing. Um, there is one point I wanted to make. Um, if you could go back to the site plan at the beginning. Um, oh, you, you oh. passed it, I'm sorry. Right there, perfect. Um, we are asking to widen the driveway um, from roughly seven and a half feet to 10 foot nine. Um, the, Current owners do struggle kind of turning into the driveway, getting out. Um, so that is another point that I wanted to kind of make in terms of that. Um, it has been a struggle for them to utilize their driveway because of how narrow it is. So that is the, the third thing that we were asking for approval. And I also wanted to point out that we do have a survey at the end of the presentation that was done by um, Palmetto. So and that's it. Thank you. Do we have any board questions? Um, I have two quick ones. Do you happen to know when, I assume there were double porches at the back um, in that little area that's now sided. Do you happen to know when that was done? I'm just curious. Um, I'm not quite sure. I would be under the assumption that it was probably in the last 30 years. Um, I would have to really check on that, but I can, I can get back with you on that. That's bad. And, um, and another question would be at the driveway, would you consider leaving just narrow planting strips on each side of that hardscape? Um, um, maybe Glenn has other thoughts. But. Um, yes, that would be a consideration as long as that they have a little bit of extra space for them to get in and out. Mm -hmm. uh, it's definitely something that we can kind of look into and draw up and see if that is a great, if that's a better solution for everyone involved. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, this is Bill, I have one question. How are you proposing to drain that uh, roof deck? Uh, is that internally drained? Um, we are looking at options, but we are thinking of internally draining that, yes. Thank you. Any other board questions at this time? 
Okay. Let's move on to uh, public comment. We have one letter and just one uh, clarification. Ms. Kashmirian, the individuals yes. that signed the letter, the uh, Elliot Allen, Lynn Hutchinson, and Leslie Lyon, were they signing on in support? Was that the intent? Yes, they were signing in with support of the project. Um, they are the rear and side neighbors. Okay, great, thank you. Yes. Okay, so this is a letter actually from um, Connor and Meredith Duffy, the property owners, to our fellow neighbors. This letter is to inform you that we will be undergoing a renovation project for our home in Ashley Avenue. The following scope of work includes a two-story rear addition and repavement of the driveway. As we are in the process of receiving the proper approvals from the Board of Zoning, DZAZ Review 2-16-2021, and Board of Architectural Review, we would like to ask for your support on this project. If you have any additional questions or concerns, please do not hesitate to contact us or the architectural engineer, excuse me, architectural designer of this project. Thank you for your time and consideration. Signed, Connor and Meredith Duffy. And the individuals who signed in support are R. Elliott Allen at 7 Colonial Street. That was, that was signed February 6, 2021. Lynn Hutchison at 8 Ashley Avenue. That was also February 6, 2021. And Leslie Lyon, the owner of 12 Ashley Avenue. That was on February 9, 2021. And I believe that is all our public comments. Is that right, Tim? That's right. Okay. Let's move on to city staff comments and recommendations. We just have one uh, suggestion would, would be to eliminate one of the windows on the south uh, elevation part of the addition. The corner of the house could appear overwhelmed with the trim and corner board that's not currently drawn. So adding an additional window at the rear would be better and likely would add more unobstructed light. The staff is recommending conceptual approval with staff comments noted in final review by staff. Thank you. Thank you, Tim. Ms. McCarian, did you want to uh, respond to any of the staff comments? Any clarification mm -hmm. needed? Uh, no, I think that all sounds fair and great. Okay. Let's move into board discussion and a vote. Uh, this is Bill. I'll go ahead and comment. I uh, agree with um, staff's comments and recommendation. Bill Moore Wilson. Uh, I agree with Bill and with staff comments and recommendations. I think I am on board as well. I just want to ask Kim, which window were you proposing to be eliminated on the south and which added on the east? So I was unclear. Let's see here. Pull up the elevation. One of these two windows mm -hmm. would roll over to the rear and then probably center this window. Okay. Um, just with the addition of the, the corner board and the trim, it might get a little right. crowded. Yeah. Sounds good. Um, All right. Real quick, Kim. So you had mentioned. I'm sorry, I didn't catch that previously, the corner board and trim. Can you go to one of those existing photos? Sure. I think maybe this is as close as we can get. Oh, whoa. Where'd it go? <laughs> All right. Well, that's good. I, I appreciate oh. that. That's good. That showed well. <laughs> okay, yeah. Just making sure it wasn't a woven corner, but it's a it's corner board. Thank you. Got it. Okay, I'm gonna make a motion for um, conceptual approval with staff comments and final review by staff. We have a motion on the floor for conceptual approval with um, comments, staff comments and final review by staff. Do we have a second? 
Fillmore, I'll second. Thank you, Fillmore. Let's put it to a vote. Glenn? Yay in favor. Phil? Yay in favor. Julia? Yay in favor. Fillmore? Yay in favor. The majority and the motion passes unanimously. Agenda item number six, 42 Bull Street. Kim? Bear with me for just a moment. All right, 42 Bull Street is requesting conceptual approval for the modification and conversion from a duplex to a single family residence, including the relocation of the front door and the reconstruction of a Piazza stair and a rear addition. The building's a category three in the Harleston Village neighborhood built in 1880 and in the old and historic district. It's an aerial for a little bit of context. This is uh, on the north side of Bull Street between Pitt and Smith. And some existing site photos. Here you can see the door that um, the applicant's proposing to remove. This is looking toward the college on Bull Street. And looking west on Bull. This is the survey card from 1973. And with that, if Becky Fenna would like to take it from here, you have the floor whenever you're ready to speak. Great, thank you, Kim. I'm Becky Fenno. I'm gonna present the renovation of 42 Bull Street. Next slide, please. Uh, and we can go to the next one. Uh, 42 Bull Street has been purchased by my clients and they would like to convert the structure from the existing duplex, which is student housing to their single family residence. This is the survey card that um, Ms. Lavin just showed. And the Sanborn maps showing that by 1944, the existing structure that we're seeing on site, the configuration of it was existing and there were some back buildings on the site. Next slide, please. These are the streetscapes. Next slide, please. This is the, the building at the top left is the elevation on Bull Street. Uh, as uh, the, the application is gonna address the front door and as well as the masonry stair to the piazza on the side. And then on the top right, you can see the east elevation facing 38 Bull Street. And in the bottom center are the two north elevations. And you can see the metal stairs going to the unit on the first floor and the unit uh, on the upper floors. And then on the bottom left, you can see the extent of the rear part of the site. Next slide. Our application, this is the site plan and we've circled the three items that we are requesting. Uh, on the Bull Street side, we are requesting to remove the front door uh, that leads to the upper unit. Uh, we are requesting to rebuild the entry stair to the piazza along the driveway. And then at the rear of the existing building, we are proposing an addition. Uh, and here on the bottom proposed site plan, you can see the configuration of adi the addition as it relates to the existing. So we're pulling in the, the wall side walls of the addition to respect the uh, existing house and then you can see that we have plenty of site left for the yard and parking and other elements. Next slide, please. This is the first floor at the top. 
I just want to note at the top right that existing door and stair going up to the upper uh, unit. We, in the bottom plan, uh, you can see that we're proposing to remove that and restore the historic window. And then we will be rebuilding the entry stair to the piazza. And then on the proposed plan, you can see more clearly the addition and how on the bottom or west wall, we're stepping in by a foot. And then on the top east wall, we're stepping in by two feet uh, from the existing. And the addition really allows us to add a family room and a screen porch onto that overlooks the yard. Next slide, please. On the second floor, there's really uh, no change to the existing with the exception of the addition at the rear. And uh, you can see here that the addition at the rear, which you see on the left, uh, allows us to have a back stair and a master suite. Next slide, please. On the upper or third floor, uh, that'll be converted to an office and a bath, but there will be no change to the exterior with the exception of the extension of the low slope roof uh, to cover the addition. But as you'll see in the elevations, the eave of that will be lower than the existing eave. Next slide. These are just a couple of the roof plan and a couple of photos of the existing uh, low slope roof that's up there right now. Next slide. So the first part uh, of our request is to remove the front door on Bull Street and to restore the window. Uh, you can see uh, the existing at the top and proposed below. And it's just interesting to note that 38 Bull Street to the right has a very similar configuration. Next slide. This is, these are some detailed photos of that doorway. At the top left, you can see how the door is as far to the corner as it can be, very utilitarian. Uh, the trim is not no longer historic. Uh, the door is not historic, nor is the stair. Actually, we were sort of laughing that there's tape is creating on the interior, that, that kind of fan pattern in the transom. Um, so uh, then uh, on the top right, uh, we, the tenants moved out and we were able to do some selective demolition and the header for that historic window is still there. Uh, at the bottom left are the interior photos of the stair. And then on the bottom right, there is new siding between the uh, existing window and the door. Next slide. This is the enlarged elevation showing the door and then at the bottom, the restoration of the old window. Next slide. Uh, these are some nearby buildings on the left with this typology of the single house with the stair entry at the side to the piazza. Next slide. The second part of our request is, is related to the first where we are asking, uh, you can see on the top left is the existing masonry stair with a masonry wall. We're requesting to remove that and rebuild this stair in a character more, uh, more just in keeping with the piazza itself. Next slide. Uh, on the left is the existing uh, masonry stair and on the right is our proposal for, to build the stair in wood with the matching handrail with the tread at grade to be stone. Next slide. The last part of our proposal is for the addition at the rear. And uh, we are proposing that it be subordinate so that the walls be set back from the existing and the E be lower. But we've tried to carry the lines, just kind of create kind of a calm addition where we carry the lines of the existing house back into the addition. Uh, so working from the existing on the right, uh, as we move to the addition, We've created the essence of a hyphen by creating the solid part with tongue and groove wood siding to kind of harken back to the lap siding that's adjacent to it. And then we'll have one over one windows that are in the same proportion and position as the adjoining existing windows. 
And then as we move to the left, we'll have a porch structure where there's open porch at the bottom and then enclosed space up above. And on this side, looking to the west, those panels are solid. Next slide, please. This is the east elevation where the fenestration is a little bit more haphazard and utilitarian. Um, but we are uh, proposing that the addition, again, the wall is set back from the existing, the eave is lower, uh, and that the the tongue and groove portion creates a little bit of a hyphen again with the one over one window. And then the porch structure with the screen porch at the first floor and then the uh, solid panels at the second floor. Next slide, please. This is the rear addition, which won't be the rear elevation, which won't be visible, but we're asking for the removal of the stairs and the uh, construction of the addition and this will all be in the porch vocabulary on this elevation. Next slide. These are some on the top left are just some additions nearby and then some studies of porch enclosures. Next slide. These are perspectives looking at the design from the public way uh, with the existing on the left and then the proposed on the right. And these are all at the west elevation Next slide. And Ms. Fino, just to let you know, you've got about a minute left. Wonderful. This is my last slide with existing on the left. Again, just looking at the two sides of the building from the public way uh, with the west side at the top and then the east side at the bottom. And we do have support from the neighbor on the west side. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ms. Fino. Let's move to public comment. Um, we have uh, Anna Catherine Carroll. Okay. You have the floor. Thank you, Kim. Anna Catherine Carroll with the Preservation Society of Charleston. The Preservation Society appreciates the applicant reaching out to us on this project, and we really feel this proposal pre presents positive changes for the historic building. We would, however, suggest study of louvers on the east side of the screened porch addition at the ground floor, which we feel would be a more appropriate treatment on the side of the addition nearest the property line, as well as setting in the west side of the addition slightly more from the plane of the historic building to provide similar, similar relief to that of the east side. But we do acknowledge that the applicant has gone to great lengths to collaborate with the, the property owners of um, the adjacent properties and we commend that. So thank you for considering our position. Thank you, Anna Catherine. And we've got one letter dated March 8, 2021 regarding the renovation and addition at 42 Bull Street. Dear Ken Lavin and BARS board, we've had the opportunity to review the drawings for the renovation and addition at 42 Bull Street that are proposed by the new owners, Ruth and Andrew Drucker and their architect, Becky Finno and are in support of the project. Thank you, signed Melise and Michael Ammons at 48 Bull Street. And I think that is it for public comment. We also have April Wood. April, you have the floor. Uh, April Wood, Historic Charleston Foundation. HCF has met with the applicant and has reviewed the request for conceptual approval for the modifications for conversion from a duplex to single family residence, including relocation of the front door and reconstruction of the piazza stairs. This property has been a rental property for many years and has multiple inappropriate alterations that need to be corrected. We applaud this applicant for their plans to reestablish this historic house as a single family residence. The proposed changes to the historic structure are completely appropriate and, and we are in support of these changes. We do, however, believe that the new rear addition should be modified to include a more defined hyphen. This hyphen should be pinched in to reduce the mass of the rear addition. As proposed, we do not believe the rear addition is sufficiently subordinate to the historic structure. Thank you. Before we move on to uh, the city comments and recommendations, uh, did the board have any questions for the applicant? Um, I have a quick one. Becky, did, did you ever consider um, sort of restoring the traditional fenestration at the piazza while you're doing this work? 
or even restoring a piazza screen and a front stair, which I have to imagine was there at some point. I know it hasn't been for a while, but it just seems pretty evident that there was a central door and central staircase and normal piazza entry. I'm just curious if you even considered that or if it's just not something that you or they are interested in doing. So we did explore it. We felt like the piazza screen would create, uh, we didn't see any evidence of it. And we thought it would create too much uh, intervention in what's there now. Uh, so we really did take the approach of, of kind of doing a modest sort of street, uh, more of a street front uh, you know, restoration. And then honestly, just kind of leaving all these campaigns of alterations that have occurred on the side. Thank you. Any other board comments at this time? All right, Tim, if you'll uh, give comments and recommendation of the city. Sure. Uh, we, we only have a couple comments. We would suggest using a different light pattern than one over one at the rear addition. Two over two or even six over six would be better. Um, a parapet might be more successful rather than the proposed low slope of, slope of the roof. Um, sorry, a parapet in front of the low slope continuing around the cornice line. Uh, staff, staff's recommending approval with comments noted in final review by staff. And we're on conceptual approval, right, Kim? Yes. Ms. Finno, did you want to uh, respond to any of the public comment, public or city comments or clarify anything? No, thank you. Appreciate those comments. All right, let's move into board discussion and a vote. Uh, this is Bill. I'll go ahead and jump in. Um, I uh, generally do agree with the uh, staff's comments and recommendations. I do um, hear the comments of the um, Preserva Preservation Society and HCF um, about potentially um, more of a relief um, at the addition. Um, I believe that can be studied. I think it's pretty close right now. Uh, I guess I really don't have a major issue with the way it's delineated on the plan. Um, I guess the one thing that I um, had a little bit of reservation about, and it's not to the point where I wouldn't support what I'm seeing here, but um, the, this panel detail at the addition, um, at first I, I was reading a lot of that as glass, but now I'm seeing as it's labeled, those are all solid panels right here on this, um, this view right here on the screen. Um, and it looks like it does convert to windows on the back of the house. So. Um, um, it may just be a, a finer, finer trim detail or whatever it takes to um, pull that off, but uh, just a little bit of maybe interested to see what the other board members might have to say about that detailing back there. Um, that's it for me. Thanks. So you're saying that on the west side, those large panels are solid, not glass? Yeah, they're labeled as solid, solid panels with trim. Oh. Yeah, it does say that on the label, Bill, you're correct. And on the east side as well? I, I believe so. Um, all right, I'll say some things uh, at the front elevation. It's clearly it's a great improvement to remove that non-original door and restore the window. Um, in terms of the preservation group's comments, you know, if that had been solid from full glass on the east side, I would have been concerned. Um, and I do like the notion of 
maybe some louvers on that side to be a little more traditional. Uh, and then regarding a hyphen, it's kind of a tough situation because that existing extension at the north sort of is a de facto hyphen element. So I feel like her having pulled it in from those corners is probably enough of a gesture in my estimation. Um, and then regarding staff's comments about the window pattern, I would, I would pick two over two over six over six. So we're not confusing anything with the existing windows. But that's all I got. Fillmore Wilson here. I, um, with uh, relating to Bill's comments, when I first looked at this, you know, my instinct was that that, that was glass, and, and and then of course I, I uh, looked at the notes and saw that it was uh, that it's panels. Um, I think that the Preservation Society's comment about uh, perhaps um, modifying to that something a, a little more traditional on the one side might be appropriate. But I, I certainly, uh, having the panels there wouldn't make me uh, not support it. I think the detailing of that, though, to Bill's comment is going to be important to make that read appropriately. And so that was really um, the uh, the only thing that caught my eye was I think that, that how those panels end up looking is going to depend on how well that detailing is, is executed. We have a proposal, any sort of um, motion. Sounds like we may have a few board comments. We can, you know, um, I would recommend make a uh, uh, motion for approval with staff comments noted. And Julie, did you want to add a comment? A, a board comment? Um, I guess if, if we can just sort of highlight the two over two and I was thinking, yeah. Not the six over six. So it would be um, approval um, with uh, what I don't. With staff, comment, um, with staff comment um, two and board comment to um, suggest using two over two in the light pattern. And final review by staff. Okay, we have a motion on the floor by Fillmore for conceptual approval with staff comment two and a board comment um, to use two over two in the light pattern, the windows, and final review by staff. I'll second that. We'll put it to a vote. Glenn? Yeah, in favor. Bill? Yeah, in favor. Bill Moore? Yeah, in favor. Julia? Yeah, in favor. Staff with the votes with the majority and the motion passes unanimously. Moving on to the 
seventh and final agenda item, 116 through 118 Cannon Street. Kim? Julia, I'm going to oh, yeah. put you on hold. Thanks, we'll see you afterwards. Okay. All right. Agenda item number seven, 116 to 118 Cannon Street, requesting conceptual approval for new construction of single family residence at the rear of the combined lot. Um, the building, I think it's 116 Cannon is a category four in the Canterborough neighborhood pre-1902 in the old city district. Here's an aerial image to acquaint you with the property. It's on the north side of Cannon, close to Ashley. I don't know if you can see that, but it's right here. Here are the two buildings, um, 116 and 118. This is looking west on Cannon Street and looking east. And with that, if Ms. Erin Lanier wants to take it from here. Good evening, board members. This is Erin Lanier with Julia Martin Architects, um, and I'm joined by our clients, John and Ashley Bays, the owners of 116 and 118 Cannon Street. And Kim, I can't see, but is, is Ashley um, available to speak as well? Do you see her? I on just the... made her a panelist as well. Okay, awesome. Thank you. Um, so we're here tonight to request conceptual approval for new construction of a single family dwelling at the rear of these two lots. Um, you're likely familiar, familiar with this little stretch of buildings near the corner of Ashley and Cannon, and you may recognize one in Cannon as the building and the photos at the bottom of the sheet here with the faux stone on the front. The structure, which had been heavily altered over time and was in rough shape, was purchased by the Bases a few years ago and is now undergoing a massive restoration, as you can see in the top image. Shortly after starting the project, the neighboring parcel at 118 became available, and so our clients jumped at the opportunity to combine and improve both properties. Next slide, please. These are some context images. Um, 116 is there in light blue, but the piazzas are in the process of being reconstructed with 118 just to the left in white. The bottom image shows your view of this property from Ashley Avenue. Here you're looking through the adjacent parking lot towards a new addition at the rear of 116. And we're requesting the new dwelling be constructed beyond that sort of mass of trees just to the south of the white fence that occupies the rear property line. Next slide, please. These are just some additional site photos looking down the driveway of both houses towards the rear of the lot. Um, any view from 118 would be really minimal, but you will get a partial view down the driveway of 116. Both properties are essentially gravel lots. Um, that they've been that way for quite some time. So the owners are excited about the opportunity to increase the green space. We're in the process of working through TRC to implement permeable paving that will maximize drainage and protect the grand tree in the middle of the lot. Next slide. We did a careful study of neighborhood precedents and accessory dwellings are pretty ubiquitous throughout Cannonboro, Elliott Borough. Um, what these images capture are successful examples, we feel, of rear structures that aren't completely hidden behind their historic counterparts, but still manage to be subservient and deferential, which of course is our goal here as well. Next slide. So here we have the sandbar maps for the area, as well as our existing and proposed site plans. Um, when combined, these lots have a fairly substantial rear yard that supports an additional dwelling, and we're proposing to locate this new structure in the northeast corner. The Sanborn maps tell us that these lots historically had quite a few accessory structures to the rear, including several which extended out beyond the west wall of the main house at 116. So you'll see we've taken some cues from what was there at one time in developing our layout, and we've broken the building footprint down into two volumes connected by a hydrant which helps reduce the scale and massing as you'll see in elevation. As I mentioned, we're working through the TRC process as we speak. And one of the requirements is that all cars be able to pull out onto Cannon Street as opposed to backing out. 
um, that necessitates a little bit more paving than we prefer, but we're still feeling like there will be a net increase in green space and a more elegant paving solution than what is there currently. And lastly, I'll just note that we are in an X zone here, so um, all HVAC condensers and mechanical equipment will be kept below the ground and hidden from view. Next slide. These are our proposed floor plans. The main entry will be through the central hyphen. Then to the left, you could enter the one-story volume with the kitchen, living, and dining areas. Or if you turn to the right, you'd be in the two-story volume where the bedrooms are located. Um, there are also two small porches on the front of the house to allow for some nice outdoor space off the kitchen and one of the bedrooms. Next slide. Here are our south and east elevations. The south being partially visible from Cannon Street and the east being visible from Ashley Avenue. It's a little difficult to perceive in 2D, but the front facade of the one-story volume steps back a little over 12 feet from that of the two-story volume. And the central hyphen is another four feet beyond that, which we think helps reduce the mass in a visually interesting way and allows us to make efficient use of the site while being respectful of the relationship between the old and new structure. I'll also mention that we've been in discussions with the Preservation Society, and they asked that we study ways to emphasize more verticality at the south elevation of the one-story volume. So we've agreed to narrow the port structure and the door unit slightly from what you see here to help achieve that. Um, we're also aware of some fenestration adjustments that staff would like to see, and we're happy to work with them on those as well. The east elevation is fairly straightforward with minimal fenestration and a simple hyphen with an eight inch reveal to help make up the length. Here again, we've tried to reinforce the traditional subordinate relationship with eaves here that are three feet below that of the main house and the ridge being two feet lower than that of the, of the historic mass. We're proposing that the main volumes be clad in seven inch boiled Dutch lap siding and then a smaller five inch nickel gap at the hyphens. Windows will be aluminum clad SDLs and we're indicating architectural shingle roofing at the main roofs with standing sea metal at the porches. Next slide, please. The north elevation will be minimally visible um, at an angle from Ashley Avenue, but you really will not be able to see much of the west elevation. Um, next slide. Here's our site section showing the completed 116 cannon at the front and our new structure at the rear. And there's just over 20 feet from the rear wall of the addition to the front wall of this accessory dwelling. Next slide. These are two versions of a streetscape view from Canon, just to the top being the actual view and then the bottom showing you the full structure behind the historic buildings, just to provide a better sense of how we've lowered our even ridge heights to keep the new structure subordinate. Next slide. And I'll just end with some 3D views, which really convey how far back on the lot this new dwelling will be. And again, what we feel is a respectful and minimal impact on the historic structures in front. Um, that is all I have, but I'd like to turn it over to the owner, Ashley Days, briefly. Thank you. Hi, good evening. Thank you so much for everyone's time today. I, I really appreciate it. Y'all looking at uh, my husband and I's property. Um, again, we are, we live downtown, we're invested in the area and we're just, we're really excited about this project that we're taking on. Thanks, Ashley. Uh, Aaron, is that all you have? That is, but I'd be happy to answer any questions. Okay, thank you. Uh, on that note, do we have any more questions? All right, let's move on to public comment. Kim, do we have any public comment on this one? We have Anna Catherine Carroll. Anna Catherine, you have the floor. Thank you, Kim. Anna Catherine Carroll with the Preservation Society of Charleston. We really appreciate the applicant reaching out to us on this project. And we feel this is a creative approach for the site that provides for a nice amount of green space. However, we would encourage continued study of the one-story mass. We feel the fenestration of this portion of the building is a bit overscaled, and as mentioned, we appreciate the applicant's willingness to study this area further. We also think it could be successful to explore a differentiated fenestration pattern from that of the two-story mass as this project moves forward. Thank you. And Catherine, and that's it for public comment, Kim? Yes, ma'am. All right, let's do city staff comments and recommendations. We just have a couple comments. While the arrangement of the building is somewhat atypical, the context of the property lends itself to creative solutions for 
rear dependency buildings on this shallow lot. We would suggest balancing the fenestration on the larger volume with five windows down the west elevation for additional light in the bedrooms and eliminating one window on the north elevation, second floor. Uh, use a full-size window in the stairwell or eliminate it altogether. The staff's recommending conceptual approval with comments noted and final review by staff. Thank you, Kim. Erin, did you have anything, any uh, staff comments or public comment to respond to or anything to clarify? Um, I would just say again, um, we're happy to look at the comments both from the Preservation Society and city staff as it relates to um, resetting some of the administration. I'm sure we'd like to keep a window in the stairwell, but we can um, look at how that can be enlarged from what we're showing now. Thank you. Thank you, Erin. Let's move on now to board discussion and a vote. Who will kick us off? Real quick, Kim, can you point out the windows per your comments, the, the windows in question or per your comments? Yeah, sure. I was um, the, let's see, the first comment, um, the stairwell window, should either um, be enlarged or go away altogether. Um, my other comments were along this side, these windows here on the second floor. Um, you know, it's only a half sash, but they should be, there should be five windows down this side and then um, another window here. That way, a little more light in. Um, it's more of a traditional rhythm and this bedroom would have um, more light and a, a, you know, a nice bed wall. Um, on the north side, they, they could retain the, the double window. I think it's going to be far enough away from the street, but it, it wouldn't be, you know, too unbalanced, or too visually um, distracting. And I think that's it. Does that answer your question, Bill? Yeah, thank you, Kim. Yeah, I guess I'll just go ahead and chime in. I'm, I'm uh, in agreement with, with uh, staff's comments and recommendations. Um, I do believe the applicant may have some ability to study the fenestration pattern of the five window proposed by staff versus the, I believe, three shown currently. Um, and I also, um, I believe the applicant stated during the presentation that we're gonna study more verticality on the one story element per some comments um, from, um, I believe, the Preservation Society. And I, I do agree with that restudy. Um, and uh, otherwise, I'm, I'm in support of the recommendation. Thank you. Glenn Gardner, um, I also agree pretty well with the staff comments. And I, I was kind of back and forth about the stairwell window, but I do, I think, tend to agree. I, I feel like on the elevation it reads is a little small. Uh, was this application for conceptual it is all right i'll i'll go ahead and jump in here i'll, I'll make a motion for conceptual approval with staff's comments noted and final review by staff we have a motion on the floor for conceptual approval with comments noted and final review by staff for bill do i have a second second glenn put it to a vote Fillmore. Yay in favor. Bill? Yay in favor. Glenn? Yay in favor. Here are votes with the majority and the motion passes unanimously. And that completes our agenda for the evening. Yeah. Anything else to cover? Do I have a uh, 
Motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. 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 All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? I believe there's no one. We are adjourned. Can't, uh, 